It's a little bit chilly this morning, but it is beautiful. As we take our seats and as we center ourselves, I would encourage you all to take a deep breath and to let it out. And let us pray. Holy God, we center ourselves in you. We know we are not perfect, and we know we are beloved. We are grateful for you in all the ways that you work in us and in the world. We call upon your name in praise and in gratitude today. In your son's holy name, amen. Let's sing. <laughs> my Jesus, my Savior, Lord is my Shelter the door of your blessing. Power and majesty, grace and king. Mountains bow down and seas will fall at the sound of your name. I sing the joy of the blood of your name. Christmas tree right here, and that is what we will be doing immediately following worship, is we will be preparing for Advent and Christmas. We will be doing some decorating. Um, we will put it, be putting up some trees upstairs as well um, to invite our Family Promise families to decorate for Christmas. That will all be followed by lunch, because we don't work without food, apparently. And food is the way we share our fellowship with one another. We have Bible study. Um, the Bible study group has regathered. Um, this week on the 30th, we will be meeting at 1410 Birch, a little place called Pastimes. There will be a food truck for those who want breakfast. Um, and then the following week, we'll be back at Family Roots. And we are doing the present word 
That's the Bible study that we will be working through. And the title of this quarter's is Faith That Pleases God. So we will be working through that together. Uh, later on in January, we will consider um, the Just Women series, which sounds fun. It's looking at faith like Alice in Wonderland through the eye of the looking glass. Um, so that's Thursday, 1030, 1410 Birch. Um, that will also go out in our e-news again. Um, December 1st is the Festival of Trees, which Sarah had reminded us of last week. Um, the Festival of Trees supports Inner Mountain. And I would encourage you to attend. We also have a special regional assembly coming up on December 9th. And this special regional assembly will be held on Zoom at 11 a.m. You are required to register. That link went out in the e-news. If you need help registering, please let me know. Um, we do have some voting members who will attend, but everyone is welcome. And it will be your opportunity to meet Reverend Paul Allen, who is our candidate for regional minister. Um, some other announcements, giving tree gifts are going to be delivered on December 11th. So if you took a gift off the tree, please make sure you bring it back here um, by the 10th would be appreciated. And then also on the 10th, and this is my final announcement, unless someone has more, we have our annual congregational meeting on the 10th. Budgets are available out in the, in the lobby area there and questions can be directed to Brenda on budget and to our chair, Dave, and our vice moderator, um, and if you have questions for the board about any of the items on the agenda, which typically include things like the budget, um, appointment of our new leadership, and reaffirming your minister. Those are the, the primary items on that. Uh, we will not at this time be doing any action on our building. Um, we will be having a meeting next week with the visioning team to go over the final legal documents that have been prepared. So it is in the works, but this annual meeting will not include that. We will have to call a special meeting later on to discuss that. Are there any other announcements? Brad? This is not an announcement. I was scurrying and didn't hear everything. Do you have a 20-second impression of our regional minister candidate? Um, I think that he is very level-headed, he's willing to listen, and he does it very well. He answers the questions that are asked of him. Um, I think that he's excited to come here. His son is a, going to be a senior next year in high school, and we asked the question about, like, how do you feel about that, like bringing your son in the middle of high school to a new school, and he said he's excited to come here. His son is a is a winter sports fanatic, so super excited about Montana and Washington and, and being able to participate in those winter sports. And he's able to continue his studies online. So he will still graduate with his school and his class and those types of things. Um, so the family is excited to be here. Uh, his, his wife works remotely so she can work from anywhere. Um, so that's a gift as well. Um, I, think that, I think that we'll be in good hands. Um, Definitely not Sandy. Sandy was Sandy, right? So we have to be open to new ideas and to a new way of being, um, but excited. And he's excited to be part of the newest region in our denomination. So that's what I've got on that. Um, I would encourage you all to attend the special regional assembly because you will get to meet him virtually and hear from him directly. Any other announcements? Did you already announce about Bibles? I sure did. And I even showed them this. What's that? That's our Bible study book. They, find, I, they, find, they finally made it in. And I would encourage other people to come because it's going to be fellowship and they get a food truck coming. Yep, food truck's ah. coming. With no other announcements, let's sing. Thank you. 
Okay. Yeah, okay. I have a little something to show you, but um, what a beautiful morning, right? And what we do is no, we have a little bit of help. <laughs> Nobody? We, we had then children here from New Jersey, and they had a ball. We had about that much snow, and our little guy was four, and she had two, not just one, two snowmen. So it was very enjoyable. So, and of course, I ended up in a few snowflakes, so I had to bring one. But for the children's message today, for all of you youngsters out there, I have something very small in my pocket, and I want to show it to you and see if you can take a guess at what it might be. I bet you can see that it's dark. I don't know if you can see it's dark, and I know people out there might wonder too. Okay. What did you say? A seed. A seed. It's a seed. And it's really dark, dark brown. And it's oval shaped. And it has a bunch of trees in it. When you think about it. Not a pine cone, but that's a good guess. Okay. Not a mustard seed. Those are, I think, a little rounder. This is really uh, oblong with a point on one end and then around on the other end. And Karen has a clue for you. Up on the screen, sorry. <laughs> it's a tree seed and it came out of one of these. And I just had to think about this because apples are really amazing. Well, all seeds are amazing. Think of what's in that one little seed that will become that. God's creation is so amazing. You guys have things that you can share that you think is that are amazing. When you really think about, I mean, just think about that one little seed. I can hold it in my hand, and I can honestly say it has a tree in it. It probably has, yeah, a big tree in it. Anything else? It's just amazing in all of God's creation. We are. <laughs> we made eye contact and she read my mind. Oh, wow. look at how different we are, but how insane we are. So that's our, our thought for today. We could not create that apple tree. We could not create that apple or even that seed. That's God's creation and we're part of it. So let's just have a little prayer. God, your creation is amazing. Thank you for all of the wonders of this beautiful world. You are awesome. Amen. And all of, oops, all of this 
came from our scripture today, and we're going to start with Karen. Karen, do you want to come and read it? We're going to read it a couple of times, just a couple of different translations. Psalms 47. Can you hear me? Clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with loud joys, songs of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, is awesome, a great king over all the earth. He subdued peoples under us and nations under our feet. He chose our heritage for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loves, Selah. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our king, sing praises. For God is the king of all the earth, sing praises with a psalm. God is king over the nations, God sits on his holy throne. The princes of the peoples gather, as the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to God, he is highly exalted. And we had that Selah in there again. Pause and reflect. So this is the reading from the Women's Lectionary. And we have all you peoples, clap your hands, shout to the Lord with a joyful sound. For the sovereign God, the Most High, is awesome a great governor over all the earth. She subdued peoples under us and nations under our feet. She chose our heritage for us, the pride of Rebecca's womb, whom she loves. God has gone up with a shout, cyanized fire with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises, sing praises to our sovereign, sing praises. For God is sovereign over all the earth. Sing praises with a song. God rules over the nations. God is seated on her holy throne. The nobles of the peoples gather. The people of the God of Hagar and Sarah. For to God belong the shields of the earth. She is highly exalted. May God bless the hearing and reading of his holy word. Last Sunday, worship was a little different. I want to offer special thanks to Barb and Brad Lancaster for pinch hitting for me. I'd intended to send a video in, but technology was not my friend. We all know how that can be. Technology is great when it works. So thank you to Barb and Brad and all of you for the grace that you offer to me and to one another. As Barb mentioned last week, I was headed to Kent, Washington to attend a Northern Lights Regional Board meeting. I decided that since I was driving, I would take a few days on that side of the country to explore and reconnect with people I know. I drove about 2,000 miles between Friday morning and Tuesday afternoon. I attended the Regional Board meeting and I met Reverend Paul Allen, who is officially our candidate for Regional Ministry. And I would encourage all of you to take the time to review his bio in the Northern Lights News. If you need a copy of that, let me know and I'll get it to you. And I would encourage you all to register attend that special assembly for Saturday, December 9th. It's important as that person will be the leader for our region, should we call them. Last week, Brad shared the ballad of Jed Clampett and he read Psalm 46. He spoke about the meaning of the word Salah, which is to pause and to reflect. And Barb shared an article from Plow Magazine titled, Be Still and Know, by Israel Steinmetz. In this article, Dr. Steinmetz writes, 
In our grasping for control and domination, American Christians have often demonstrated a far greater commitment to waging war than making peace. We need to hear and heed this unexpected call to peace. Be still and know that I am God. He goes on to say that be still conveys the image of loosening one's grip. Be still is a command to be at peace. Stop fighting, stop striving, stop waging war. Embrace the peace that comes in God's eschatological victory. Live into a future world where wars cease. Being Christian isn't easy. We are called to an impossible standard and an impossible commission. Love God, love neighbor as yourself, love your enemies. We are called to live in the tension of a partially realized eschatology, and that's simply a huge church word for the end times, or the time when God's kingdom is fully realized. In the ancient days, they believed that the end times were very near, right around the corner, in fact. And in our world today, we have lost the sense of nearness of the end times. Though I will say, with the increasing violence and the current wars around the world, some of us are again feeling the urgency of eschatological thinking. As Christians, we are called to live in the perpetual tension of already and not yet. And it's into this tension that I am called to speak as a minister. This tension between a world at war and a world at peace, the tension between Christian soldiers and Christian pacifists, the tension between loving God and enemies and serving our country. I want you to hear me very clearly. In no way was the article read last week intended to leave anyone, especially our military personnel and veterans, feeling condemned for their service. Your service is paramount to our freedom and our way of life. The article that was read was an opinion piece that I had found interesting. Something maybe to inspire conversation, not something to leave you feeling attacked or wounded. Living in the tension of our faith is challenging. Bringing awareness to that tension and finding ways to open up our hearts to different possibilities is even more so. Sometimes it's a gentle nudge and sometimes it's a push that was harder than intended. To those who reached out to me to share your feelings, thank you. This congregation has a history of being hurt, stuffing it under the rug, and letting it fester until things blow up in all sorts of painful ways. Thank you for courageously offering your thoughts and for trusting me enough to hold space for them. To those who haven't spoken up, I hope you will consider this congregation as an open table, a safe place where we do not have to agree and we can talk about our differences without feeling divided, a place where we truly can care for one another. I am sorry if you felt wounded, hurt, or angry. I know that the sacrifice many of you and your families have made came at a huge cost. And I need you to know, I appreciate your service. My faith calls me to live in the intention, the tension between immense gratitude for your service and the desire to not bury any more soldiers or any more people, regardless of whose side they're on. To me, every life is precious. Every 
every single one of us is created in the image of God, and every single one of us has the right to live and to love. It is with this truth in my being that I continue with Psalm 46 and 47. Clinton McCann Jr. writes, According to the ancient Near Eastern view of the universe, the mountains were both the foundations that anchored the dry land in the midst of a watery chaos and the pillars that held up the sky. Psalm 46 begins with the ultimate doomsday scenario. And still, God is refuge, strength, and help. McCann writes that Psalm 46 invites its hearers to enter the reign of God, to live in dependence upon God, to find ultimate security in God, rather than in self or in any human systems or possessions. Basically, Psalm 46 calls us to imagine the worst possible scenario, to prepare for it, and still to hope for the best. McCann writes, Shall we see the world as the sphere of God's rule? In our day, the decision to recognize God's sovereignty is crucial. We are tempted more than ever to conclude that our security finally depends on ourselves, or our possessions, or our technology, or our weapons. The governments of the world attempt to justify terrible, repressive, and destructive activities in the name of national security. And of course, our implements of destruction are no longer just arrows and spears and shields. We have tanks and submarines and nuclear missiles. And more readily than any generation in history, we are able to picture a worst case scenario resulting from our own actions. Faced with the temptation to self-assertion, yet aware of its frightening results, we hear in Psalm 46 the good news that our ultimate security lies not in our own strength or our own efforts or our own implements, but in the presence and power of God. God is our refuge. God is worthy of our trust. God is our strength. God is sovereign over all creation. God rules the world for us. God is our help. God's strength is inclined towards our aid. One of the problems, as I see it, is that we want the us to be exclusive to our race, or our religion, or our nation, or any of the other hosts of segregation. We want God on our side, rather than us being on God's side. We, as McCann suggests, have a persistent temptation to make our God too small. He writes that we are quick to recall that God chose our heritage for us, and loves us. But we are quick to forget that God loves the world and that all the world's rulers and people belong to God. The Christian practice of speaking about Jesus as a personal savior may be symptomatic of our forgetfulness. For often, we seem to mean that we own God rather than that God owns us. If you were here a couple weeks ago, or if you listened online, you heard me talk about our identity identity being in Christ, in God. Who we are, and now whose we are. We are created in God's image, and we belong to God. Will the Gaffney writes, to the fallen Judean monarchy and their Babylonian colonizers and occupiers, Jesus says, the poor of the land who are deemed not worth the labor to even deport, are at the heart of the reign of God. The majesty of Christ is not found in treasures of temple and palace, 
burgled and broken apart, but in a crown of thorns beaten in by bullies and in his battered and denuded body. This human, mortal, woman-born Jesus is the glory and majesty of God. In the words of the epistle to Hebrews, the brilliance of God's glory and reproduction of God's very being, that humanness shared with every girl and woman, boy and man, non-binary child and adult, is also the majesty of Christ and our own. That was Will de Gaffney. This humanness shared by all people is the majesty of Christ and our own. We may struggle to admit it, but we are all in this together. The world would have us focus on our differences. Our doomsday scrolling through social media fans the flames of dispersion and derision and degradation. And at its worst, we allow our religions and our governments to carve swaths of hatred to our hearts, sowing seeds of scarcity which corrupt and pervert us until we turn to violence and war as the only viable solution. Our patriotism, our love of country, becomes, as Joan Chittister writes, a destructive idolatry the king of national fetish, which can, if taken to its limits, and in the Holocaust of Jews, the genocide of Bosnians, the decimation of Palestinians, and the massacre of Native Americans. But the psalmist is clear. God cares for all nations. What we do in the name of Americanism to people will be weighed in the light of what is good for all creation, our own and those whose lives as a nation we touch. She goes on to say that real patriotism welcomes, encourages, commits itself to the great national debates that question war, resist taxes, and determine penal systems. Real patriotism will not be reached on this planet until, for each of us, our country is the world. Until then, we are all merely tribes fighting for territory that doesn't belong to us in the first place. Real love of country demands that we find the beauty in other cultures and strive to grow from what we learn from others. God cares for all nations. God cares for all creation. If all of us and all of this belongs to God, who loses when we succumb to violence in our language and in our actions? Who loses when we engage in warfare? God. God loses. McCann writes, to worship the God of Abraham and the God revealed in Jesus Christ is to worship a universal sovereign. And it means claiming every other person in the world as a sister or a brother. To acknowledge God's universal sovereignty might even mean that we give our assent and support to the simple proposal that we Christians take a first step towards world peace by refusing to kill each other. Refusing to kill each other in thought, in word, and in deed. Refusing to treat any of our brothers and sisters as somehow less than. Living out of the identity we claim, we are called to engage the Great Commission. Love God, love neighbor as ourselves, and love our enemies. Leighton Williams wrote a reflection on Psalm 47, and it's titled, I Want a Different God. Leighton Williams writes, I do not want a God of war, 
I cannot celebrate a God who crushes and devours and uplifts some while destroying others. Say that it was a different time, but this time has been built on ones that exalted violence. We have been bleeding at the altars of such gods for too damn long. I don't want to be the lucky survivor. I do not want to be a favored child. I want no favorites. I want us all to make it. I want a better God, a gentler God, a God of all the earth who holds us all together and heals the cracks between us instead of filling them with bodies. Leighton Williams. I want a different God, too. I don't want us to settle for God, reduced to our own understanding, the limited version of God that we argue and fight over. I want the mystery of God, the compelling truth with a capital T that never ceases to break open our hearts, the everlasting love that nothing can separate us from, the warrior for peace. This is our awesome God. Amen. As we come to our time of prayer, I will open us in prayer and I will offer a time of silence for you to speak out loud your joys, your concerns, your celebrations and your sorrows. Let us pray. For Sarah Whitback, she's had a knee, foot surgery in December, <coughs> and also she needs to bend for your prayers. To our warrior for peace, you give us the armor that we put on you give us the armor that we carry with us. Help us to be instruments of your peace. Help us to understand that we live in tension. We have your son as a living example of a perfect life. An example to which we strive and fail and strive again. And through it all, you love us. For what and for whom do we pray? Ask for prayers for the family of Tom Miller, good friend and colleague of mine, who passed away Thanksgiving Day. So please pray for his family for comfort and peace. The family of Tom Miller and his passing, for their comfort and their peace, for Sarah Whitlatch and surgery and recovery. I would like to offer thanks for Tom Miller. Tom Miller was a tremendous influence on our sons when they were in school. Tremendous positive influence. Want to um, pray for the employees where I work, and also Shelly, who many of you know, she'll be having surgery on Monday. Prayers of gratitude for Tom Miller and the influence he was. Prayers for Shelly and her coming surgery. Many of you remember her. And prayers for the employees of jobs that can be so hard when we are called to take action that our hearts would rather say no to but the rules require us to say yes to God, the prayers of thanks for one of my brothers having successful knee surgery but uh, prayers for another of my brothers who appears to be um, entering the long good night of dementia. Mm -hmm.
prayers for successful surgery and prayers also for the beginnings of dementia. Prayers for our friend Castile, going through many difficulties and needs part of our congregation and keeping in our prayers. Prayers for Castile and all of the struggles that he faces. And prayers of gratitude to this congregation for embracing him and stepping in to help him when he needed him most. And offer prayers for Barb Creel's son-in-law. And I would offer prayers for all those who are impacted by the violence of today's world. Whether they be soldiers or bystanders, whether they be active in condemnation and active in destruction, war, innocent children standing by. All are beloved children of God. All of you are beloved children of God. And God, we thank you for always being with us through that darkness, through the struggles, through the joys, and through the celebrations. You are with us. Help us to remember we are yours. Help us to behave that way as well. In your son's holy name, we pray the words he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's sing.
And we're going to keep you singing. Okay. Yep. I went a little out of order today, but that's just how the spirit rolls. Put on your big guitar now. <laughs> Open my eyes and let me see. You heart of the door. Open my eyes and Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to sing. You're my God. talked about the wonder of God's creation. Trees and plants have seeds that can be collected, saved, and planted to grow more trees. Trees grow to be similar to the tree that bore the fruit, that bore the seed that they grew from. They can be only that type of, of tree that the seed is. People are created in the same awesome by the same awesome God that created the trees, although people physically resemble the people that bore them, their parents. We know that we also have a spiritual parent, the creator of all people. We can choose to become more like Jesus. We have a choice. He came to help us understand the love of God. He taught that we are all God's children, and as such, we should love one another as brothers and sisters, even as generations of our society have moved toward and accepted greed, judgment, division. When we come to this time of communion, we remember how Jesus showed love to all people, an unconditional love that was stronger than fear or hatred, so strong that he staked his life on it. At this table, we are reminded to love unconditionally and generously. Every life 
is precious. Affirm with me, all are welcome at Christ's table. On that last night, Jesus said, I'm coming to And he shared with them, body broken, so that we could take, eat, remember. And, and he took wine and poured it, he shared with them a new hope, a new promise poured out for all people so that we could drink and remember. Us today as we take this cup and this bread, that our eyes and our hearts may be open that we may see and love your world in the way that you love. Guide us in all that we do. Amen. Come and drink the
now for just a little moment of stewardship, I think we elders talk about that a lot, that before the Thanksgiving prayer, we, we do a little stewardship last week we, and the week before we talked about our Thanksgiving offering, which is a big, a big offering for our denomination. And um, so as I was sitting there, I was thinking about this apple in my pocket and all the things this apple has within it, you know, it has the fruit that's going to give somebody some strength and some pleasure and then has the seeds that are going to, you know, could grow a new tree and just continue the giving. And I look at all of you and I'm so thankful for all of the giving you do in ways that that I don't know, but but just look at everybody there. We're kind of like an apple. And when we go out, you know, sometimes we're planting seeds that are going to be big. Like I think of family promise and our support of that. It's a, it's a big, it's a big deal that we support them. And, and um, there are lots of other things. Last week we had our little tree for the friendship center. And I know a lot of people took a little tag to bring back gifts. Um, if, if, what was it? Florence Crittenton, but there's the Friendship Center, there's the YWCA, there's lots of agencies out here that I know that we, we reach out to as individuals too, and just your neighbors, um, supporting the church, there's just so many ways that that this church gives to the community, and I give thanks for that, Brad? I forgot to mention that last week I raised the question of Bushnell University. Oh, yeah. And Bushnell still is affiliated with the site of Christ. It just is not an immediate recipient of uh, DMF funding. Okay. Site of Christ funding. So Good. it's still affiliated. Good. Thank you for checking on that. So also, yeah, um, other universities and, and education and just so many places that we give. So we just have so much to be thankful for that we can give, be a, a a bright light shining out there. So let's give thanks. Creator, we come with thankful hearts. We have gifts and talents to share. We have this community to join with us as we strive to reach the lonely, the hurting, the lost. We ask your blessing on the talents and treasures shared and your guidance in all that we do. Amen. Please join us for the final song. <clears throat> Decorate first and then food. The soups are almost ready. And in the words of Parker Palmer, when the going gets rough, turn to wonder. We have an awesome God. Amen.
to share. 